Welcome sa inyong lahat mga kaibigan, mga kapatiran sa ating episodes this morning sa God's Word for Today devotional. And let's talk about the life of Stephen today na mababasa natin sa Acts chapter 6 verse 8 to 15. Let me read this ating Tagalog na Biblia. Si Stephen napuspos ng biyaya at ng kapangyarihan ay gumawa ng mga dakilang kababalaghan at mga tanda sa mga tao. Ngunit tumayo ang ilan mula sa sinaguga na tinatawag ng mga pinalaya at ng mga sereneo at ng mga alihandrino at ng mga taga Silicia at taga Asia at nakapitalo kay Stephen. Ngunit hindi sila makasarungat sa karunungan at sa espiritu na sa pamamagitan nito ay nagsasalita siya. Nang magkagayoy lihim nilang sinusulan ang ilang lalaki na nagsasabi, Narinig namin, nagsasalita siya ng mga salitang kalapastangan laban kay Moses at sa Diyos. Kanilang sinusulsulan ang mga taong bayan, maging ang matatanda at ang mga eskriba. Siya ay kanilang hinaharap, hinuli at dinala sa Sanhedrin. Nagharap sila ng mga sinungaling na saksi na nagsabi, ang taong ito ay hindi tumitigil sa pagsasalita ng mga salitang laban sa dating banal na ito ay at sa kautusan. Sapagkat narinig namin kanyang sinabi na wawasakin itong si Jesus na taga Nazaret ang dakong ito at babaguhin ang mga kaugalingang ipinamana sa atin ni Moses. Nakita ng lahat ng nakaupo sa sanitin na nakatitig sa kanya na ang kanyang mukha ay katulad na mukha ng isang anghel. One of the first deacons, Stephen was a Hellenist Jew. Ibig sabihin that he grew up in a culture of the Jew of the Greeks, but he was a Jew by blood. And he was a person of unique traits. Kasi po, he was tough in his words, but tender in his looks. Masabi natin, tough yet very soft. Adamant yet angelic. He was so Strong in his conviction. He was adamant as a preacher, but angelic in his appearance. He was harmless in his appearance. The synagogue of the freedmen, as it was called. Sino ba itong mga freedmen ito? They were former slaves of uh, the, the captivity who became, who became free. And they were scattered all over. And of the Cyrenians. The Cyrenians are maybe the modern Libya today and of the Alexandrians, and of those from Cilicia. Remember, Paul is from Cilicia and Asia. They rose up and disputed with Stephen. So itong mga Jews na to, who grew up in different places outside of Jerusalem or outside of Israel, they um, cannot stand against the wisdom of Stephen. They could not withstand the wisdom and the spirit with which he was speaking. Now, isa siya laban sa marami. Hindi ka not accept of what he was talking about, especially Jesus. Remember in the Old Testament, si Elijah ay ganun din ang kanyang naramdaman o naranasan. He was against a lot of prophets from Jezebel. You know, the 400 prophets of Baal. And another 400 prophets from the group against himself. Si Elijah, katulad dito si Stephen. The Jews from all over the region were against him because of his preaching. And remember, Stephen is of good repute. He was full of faith and of spirit and of wisdom. According to Acts chapter 6 verse 3, which we have learned. Definitely, ang kanyang wisdom was from above. Galing sa Banana Espiritu. Ang kanyang mga kaaway o ang kanyang mga opponents ran out of reasons against him. So anong ginagawa nila? Because they ran out of reasons, they cannot go against his wisdom. 
This led Stephen's opponents to initiate among the people a mob that the people would be mad and kill them or kill him later. So, itong sinasabi nila sa mga tao. We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and and God. So, ginamit pa nila ang, pang, ang Panginoon, ang pangalan ni Moses at Panginoon as reasons that Stephen was um, have to be uh, accused of of wrong something wrong. And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes and they came up on him and seized him and brought him before the council, sa Sanhedrin. They accused Stephen saying that Stephen wants to see the temple destroyed in Jerusalem. So he quoted or he was quoted wrongly by these people. So they really maligned him. They really slandered him. Moreover, while they were at the council, they set up false witnesses who said, This man never ceases to speak words against this holy place and the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and will change the customs that Moses delivered to us. So, nakikita natin that wala na po silang magagawa but to really initiate this mob until the reach to the point na nandoon na sila sa council, nagharapan na. Stephen's political prowess, I never natin may underestimate ito. He was really very strong in, and wise and he really defended the faith well. So that these people have run out of any reason. But sadly, these people were not ready to hear. In such a case, ang ginawa nila is that they justified their desire to reject the gospel by accusing Stephen of a wrongdoing that he did not do. Ang nakikita natin is when Stephen spoke boldly about Jesus, the resurrected Jesus, di nila tinanggap. And then what happened is that it caused hardness, hardness in their hearts. Nagpatuloy na na magtigas sila sa nilang puso. And that's the truth about it. The gospel that can soften our hearts to be humble to recognize Jesus can become a source also, also of hardening when one will reject the gospel. Should you have heard the gospel many times, maybe you keep on rejecting the gospel, you keep on saying, no, that should not be true. No, Jesus is not really real. Jesus is not the savior of the world. You keep on rejecting. The more you are hardening your heart, the more that you are building the, the wall thicker and thicker in your heart. That's no wonder that hindi um, madaling makunbik ang isang tao who keeps on rejecting because nagkaroon yung hardness sa puso niya. Itong mga scenario na to that uh, people who are hard in their hearts could create problems to those who preach the gospel. I sinabi na po ni Jesus Christo when he taught the disciples beforehand. He prepared the disciples about this by telling them na may mga tao na hindi tatanggap sa inyong mensahe. What you are going to do is to shake the dust of your feet and leave, leave them or refuse to listen. Matthew 10 verse 14. Wala tayong magagawa. I mean, that's their choice. More seriously, he warned them that those who would reject his message would persecute them someday. Hindi lang na they are going to just say no, but they will oppress and they will oppose and they become violent in many cases. Even then, we as Christians, like the disciples and even like Stephen, we must not only be tough, we must be strong in our conviction for the gospel because the gospel is still powerful and to salvation to those who believe. But 
let's be nice to those people. Let's not be vindictive to them, even if they oppress us. Let's not be bitter against them. Let's not be angry at them. Let's not be carried away by our emotion to hate them. May we'll be like Stephen. He was tough, yet tender in his heart. He was adamant, yet angelic in his appearance. We could be strong, yet we can be non-vindictive. We could be compassionate still to these people because we understand that we are not fighting against flesh and blood. We are fighting against our unseen enemy who use or who uses the weakness of people in order to instigate them to oppress those who are godly, those who are preaching the gospel. Let's remember that. So a lesson learned for us today is to let the message of the gospel continue to offend people. Let's not be ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Sana po hindi ma-offend ang tao sa ating attitude. Our message could offend people. Our message could not be acceptable to people, and that's why they hate. They hate us because they hate our message. But I hope the reason of their hatred is not because of our bad attitude, our poor attitude. Yes, we cannot prevent this scenario. There will be people who will not accept the gospel. And that's why they hate godly people. But I hope that they will not question our attitude. You may say, I cannot accept your message, but I like them because they are good people. They are not vindictive people. They are loving people. Maybe they will recognize our good attitudes right attitudes, uh, although they will reject our message. We will be like Stephen, will be adamant, yet angelic. Thank you, Lord, for your word today. I pray that this will stay in our hearts, Lord. Um, it's only by the power of the Holy Spirit, like Stephen, who was full of faith and the spirit and of wisdom. And we know that we need to be like him in order that we could be of right attitudes, Lord, and be strong in our convictions. And thank you, Lord, that you can transform timid, fearful people like us to be strong, to be men and women of convictions because of the power of the Holy Spirit. And may be that today we'll display this kind of attitude. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.